In the heart of Ahmedabad's bustling urban sprawl, where the hum of the city's lifeblood could be heard from dawn until the late hours, there was a quiet corner that seemed almost untouched by the outside world. It was here, in a modestly furnished apartment, where Neeraj called home, a sanctuary he shared with his aunt, a woman of resilience and warmth. Neeraj was in that tender cusp of life, seventeen, teetering on the brink of manhood yet still ensnared by the tendrils of childhood. His days were punctuated by the rhythmic routine of school and study, under the watchful eye of his aunt, a nurse by profession and a guardian by circumstance. With his parents and sisters miles away in his village, it was just Neeraj and his aunt against the world. Their bond was one of necessity, yet it was laced with genuine affection. On a particular Saturday, as the sun dipped below the horizon, giving way to a velvety dusk, Neeraj and his aunt settled in for an evening that was to be like any other, or so it seemed. The flicker of the television cast a soft glow across the room, illuminating the faces of the duo as they watched, Chachi 420, a film that playfully tackled the theme of cross-dressing. As Kamal Hassan on screen deftly navigated the complexities of disguise and identity, a light-hearted jest from Neeraj's aunt broke the tranquility of their viewing. Neeraj, do you find all this amusing? She asked, her eyes twinkling with mischief. Neeraj, ever the respectful nephew, was taken aback. What do you mean, aunt? He replied, his curiosity piqued. His aunt's smile widened. The cross-dressing. The way he prances about in a sari, fooling everyone. What if you were to walk a mile in those flowing garments? She teased. A silent gasp escaped Neeraj's lips. That's just for movies, aunt. People do a lot to entertain, he said dismissively, yet a strange flicker of intrigue sparked within him. The room was filled with the hum of the ceiling fan as his aunt's voice lowered to a conspiratorial whisper. But Neeraj, what harm is there? Clothes are just fabric, after all. They don't define us, do they? Her words, though light, carried the weight of unspoken truths about freedom and identity. Neeraj felt the soft fabric of the couch beneath him, a tangible reminder of the comforts of his structured life. His aunt's proposal, however playful, tugged at the corners of his neatly folded existence. You wouldn't dare, would you? She nudged, her challenge now more apparent. The air seemed to thicken with anticipation. Neeraj, a boy who had always colored within the lines, felt a tremor of rebellion stirring within. His heart raced at the thought of stepping into the world of the cross-dresser, even if just within these four walls. Only if it stays between us, Neeraj finally conceded, his voice barely above a whisper. His conditions were clear, this would be a singular event, never to be replicated or spoken of outside their shared sanctuary. His aunt's response was swift and solemn, a promise sealed with a nod. Of course, she agreed, the pact between them as sacred as any vow. And so it was decided. Neeraj stood at the precipice of an unknown journey, his aunt the unlikely guide into a realm where clothing was more than mere attire, it was an exploration of self. In the privacy of their home, away from the scrutinizing eyes of society, Neeraj was about to embark on a voyage that would challenge the very fabric of his being. The night was young, and the stage was set for transformation. Neeraj's heart fluttered with a cocktail of fear and excitement unaware that this was to be the genesis of his awakening. As he followed his aunt into the realm of silks and satins, Neeraj was stepping into a narrative that would redefine everything he knew about the garments we wear and the identities we choose, or that choose us. The night wrapped its cloak around the city of Ahmedabad, and within the walls of a modest abode, the air was thick with the scent of possibility. In the aftermath of the movie's comedic escapades, Neeraj sat with his heart thrumming in his chest, the echo of his aunt's challenge ringing in his ears. Aunt, you just too much, Neeraj tried to laugh it off, but there was a tremor of curiosity in his voice, a silent admission that the seed of intrigue had been planted. 
His aunt leaned forward, her gaze piercing through the dim light, seeking out the silent whispers of his heart. Neeraj, she said, her voice a blend of warmth and encouragement, it's but a harmless dance of fabrics. A game, if you will. What say you? Neeraj's mind was a carousel of thoughts, spinning with the vibrant images of the cross-dresser hero from Chachi 420. He was a boy on the cusp of manhood, yet here he was, contemplating a dalliance with the forbidden, the taboo act of a man donning women's attire. All right, aunt, he conceded, his words laced with a daring he hadn't known he possessed. But only once. You must swear it won't go beyond these walls. And you will never speak of it again, not to mother, not to anyone. The pact was solemn, sacred in its secrecy. His aunt nodded, her eyes alight with an unspoken understanding. On my honor, Neeraj. It shall be our little secret. The next moments were a blur as Neeraj's aunt disappeared into her room, leaving him to stew in a concoction of anticipation and apprehension. When she returned, she bore the tools of transformation, a pile of fabrics and colors that Neeraj had only ever seen from afar. Will you garb yourself in these, or shall I assist? She asked, her tone playful yet respectful of his boundaries. Neeraj stood, his feet rooted to the spot, as he eyed the collection laid out before him. A nighty, black as the night outside, undergarments that whispered promises of a hidden softness, and the mystery of makeup that lay beyond his realm of experience. I'll manage, he murmured, taking the first step towards an unknown that beckoned him with silken fingers. In the sanctity of his aunt's room, Neeraj shed the armor of his everyday attire, stripping down to the bare truth of himself. It was here, in the quietude of vulnerability, that he reached for the black panty, its fabric a caress against his skin. The bra was a puzzle, its clasps and straps a language he couldn't fathom. With a mix of frustration and laughter, he surrendered to the nighty, its sleeveless design a whisper against his body. Are you decent? Came his aunt's voice from beyond the door, laced with a mirth that eased his tension. Yes, Neeraj called out, the word a lifeline to normalcy. She entered, a guardian and a guide in this rite of passage. The bra, Neeraj, she pointed out gently, her hands adept as she taught him the intricacies of hooks and eyes, filling the cups with socks to mimic the contours of a female form. And then, the makeup, a stroke of kajal to define his eyes, a dab of lipstick to color his words, and a touch of powder to set his new face. Each application was a brush stroke on the canvas of his identity, his reflection morphing with every moment. You're doing well, Neeraj, his aunt encouraged as she stepped back, her work complete. Now, look at yourself. See the beauty that defies norms. Neeraj approached the mirror, heart in his throat. The reflection that stared back was familiar, yet not, a cross-dresser's visage that challenged everything he knew. It was him, yet not him. It was the beginning of someone new. The room spun around him, a carousel of color and light, and in the center of it all stood Neeraj, the boy who had dared to cross the lines drawn by society. In the reflection of the mirror, under the tender gaze of his aunt, Neeraj glimpsed the freedom that comes with the shedding of expectations. As the clock ticked towards midnight, the world outside unaware, Neeraj stood at the crossroads of self-discovery. The night was still young, and the story of Neeraj, the accidental cross-dresser, had just begun to unfold. In the silent serenity of his aunt's room, with the clock's hands inching towards the witching hour, Neeraj stood suspended in a moment of transformation. The nighty clung to his form, a shadow against his skin, the unfamiliar weight of the stuffed bra a constant reminder of the masquerade he had agreed to. His aunt, with hands that had comforted the sick and soothed the weary, now worked with a different kind of care. The tools of makeup and attire lay scattered around, like petals around a blossom, ready to bring forth an awakening. Neeraj, she whispered, you are about to meet yourself in a way you never have before. 
The door clicked shut, leaving them cocooned in a world where the norms that bound identities were left at the threshold. The soft glow of the bedside lamp cast a warm hue, as if the room itself conspired to soften the edges of reality. His aunt's fingers danced with the precision of a maestro as she guided him through the rites of this new world. The gentle tug of the nighty's straps, the cool touch of the cream on his face, and the delicate clasp of jewelry around his neck. Do you trust me? She asked, her eyes locking onto his in the mirror. It was a question laden with layers, reaching beyond the present into the corridors of his unspoken thoughts. Yes, he answered, his voice a thread of sound in the quiet room. She smiled, and with a practiced hand, began to redefine the arches of his eyebrows. The mascara wand flicked against his lashes, darkening them into a frame for his transformed eyes. The kajal followed, a stroke of night against the dawn of his new persona. Neeraj felt a tightness in his chest, a mix of fear and exhilaration. His aunt's presence was a bomb, her occasional nods and smiles a guidepost reassuring him of the normalcy of this exploration. A brush laden with rouge brought a flush to his cheeks, mimicking the natural glow of excitement. Lips, once pale, were now a bold statement in red, pursed in contemplation as he watched his reflection evolve. Almost there, his aunt announced, stepping back to assess her handiwork. She reached for the nail polish, a final act to complete the artistry. Neeraj hesitated, a line drawn by his own discomfort. Aunt, no, he protested weakly. That's too much. Her laughter was soft, knowing. Neeraj, sometimes to truly see ourselves, we must cross the lines we draw. This is but a small leap. And so, he relented, extending his hands like a bird unfurling its wings for the first time, letting the color adorn his nails, the scent of the polish a potent reminder of the metamorphosis taking place. With each brushstroke, Neeraj felt a shedding of his former self, the layers peeling back to reveal someone new, someone delicate yet daring. It was a sensation that both bewildered and beguiled him. The final touch was the necklace, a simple piece that seemed to hold the weight of his newfound identity. It lay against his skin, a testament to the journey he was undertaking. You are ready, his aunt said, her voice a mix of pride and something deeper, more profound. Neeraj stood, taking the few steps to the mirror, his heart a drumbeat in his chest. There, staring back at him, was a stranger, yet not. A cross-dresser's image, yes, but also a revelation of the self he had never known. His short hair was the only betrayal of the illusion, yet in that moment, it seemed inconsequential. He was mesmerizing, a harmonious blend of masculine and feminine, challenging the very notion of these binaries. His aunt, standing beside him with a smile of accomplishment, clicked a picture on her phone, capturing the birth of Neeraj's alter ego. This is you, too, she said, her words settling around him like a cloak. This is part of your story now. Neeraj gazed at his reflection, at the person he had become under the gentle guidance of his aunt. The room around him was the same, yet he felt worlds away from the boy who had sat down to watch a movie mere hours ago. In the sanctuary of that room, with his aunt by his side, Neeraj began to understand the complexities of identity. It was not just the clothes that made the man, or the woman, but the courage to embrace all facets of oneself. As the night deepened, Neeraj, draped in the soft fabric of the nighty and the mantle of Ashmita, took his first steps into a broader understanding of who he could be. It was the beginning of an inner dialogue, a conversation between Neeraj and the reflection that shared his eyes but bore a different soul. The story of Neeraj, the cross-dresser in the making, was just starting to unfold, with each layer of fabric and makeup adding depth to his unfolding narrative. Dawn's first light crept through the curtains, casting a gentle glow on the room where Neeraj had spent the night in restless slumber. The unusual attire of the night before, now disheveled by sleep, still adorned his body. 
As consciousness slowly reclaimed him, the events of the previous evening, the laughter, the makeup, the transformation, seemed like fragments of a dream he couldn't fully grasp. In the quiet aftermath, Neeraj lay tangled in a cocoon of sheets and emotions. The room, imbued with the scent of nail polish and face powder, served as a sensory reminder of his journey into the uncharted territories of his soul. It was Sunday, a day that usually promised rest and leisure, but for Neeraj, it held the weight of contemplation. The sound of his aunt's footsteps approached, a rhythm that had become the heartbeat of their shared home. She knocked softly, her voice filtering through the wood, Neeraj, wake up. It's a beautiful morning. He responded with a sleepy grunt, the vestiges of Ashmita still clinging to his skin. Come down after you shower, his aunt called out. Tea and breakfast are ready. And afterward, I'll remove your nail polish. The mention of nail polish jolted Neeraj to full awareness. He glanced at his hands, the color on his nails a stark reminder of his exploration into femininity. A sense of shyness enveloped him, the bravado of the night before now replaced with the vulnerability of daylight. Aunt, let it be for today. I want to wear this nightie the whole day, he murmured, surprising even himself. His voice was soft, yet there was a thread of newfound confidence weaving through his words. His aunt paused at the door, a smile audible in her voice. Why, have you started liking all this? She teased, her playful tone belying the depth of her question. Neeraj sat up, the fabric of the nighty caressing his skin. Aunt, I want to try on all the clothes, he confessed, his heart pounding with a mix of eagerness and trepidation. She entered then, a vision of maternal warmth, holding a bottle in her hand. Apply this on your hands, feet, and chest. Take a bath after half an hour, she instructed, handing him the bottle. Meanwhile, I'll go to the market. The bottle felt cool and foreign in his grasp. What is this, aunt? He asked, his mind racing. And isn't the market closed on Sundays? It's hair removal cream, she explained with a serene smile. Today, I will make you a complete girl. And don't worry about Sundays, latest shops are open. Neeraj felt a surge of something undefinable, excitement mingled with a dash of fear. Just be ready after your bath. I'm going to turn you into a girl completely. His aunt's words hung in the air, a declaration of change. As she left, Neeraj looked at the bottle in his hand, a simple vessel that held the potential to wash away the physical markers of his masculinity. Alone with his thoughts, he applied the cream, the cool substance stripping him of more than just body hair, it was peeling away layers of identity he had worn all his life. After half an hour, he stepped into the shower, watching as the water carried away the remnants of his former self, leaving his skin soft, smooth, and unfamiliar. Wrapped in a towel around his waist, he heard the doorbell ring. Through the keyhole, he saw his aunt, bags of shopping in hand. He opened the door, the towel his only armor. She swept in, her presence filling the room. With a practiced motion, she re-wrapped the towel around his chest, her touch gentle yet firm. Girls wrap the towel around their chest, not their waist, she corrected him with a knowing look. She led him to her room, the question hanging in the air, tell me, what do you want to try first? A sari, salwar, or something else? Neeraj, still clutching the towel to his newfound curves, felt the gravity of the decision. Aunt, let's start with the salwar kameez, he said, his voice a mixture of nerves and anticipation. The morning light streamed through the window, bathing the room in a soft radiance as Neeraj stood at the precipice of another transformation. With each choice, each garment, each stroke of the brush, he was painting a new picture of himself, one that defied the black and white sketches of gender that the world had handed him. The day stretched before them, a canvas yet to be colored, and Neeraj, guided by his aunt's hand, was about to choose his own palette. 
The boy who had laughed at the antics of a crossdresser in a movie now stood ready to embrace the crossdresser within. Blurring the lines between disguise and reality, between Neeraj and Ashmita. The morning sun had climbed high enough to fill the room with a clarity that seemed at odds with the turmoil in Neeraj's heart. His aunt's room had become a stage where he would don the intricate costume of a character he was only beginning to understand, Ashmita. The salwar kameez, a staple of Indian femininity, lay draped across the bed. Its fabric was a rich tapestry of crimson and gold, the colors of a dawning sky. Neeraj's fingers traced the embroidery, each stitch a testament to a tradition far older than the questions that now whirled in his mind. Aunt, it's beautiful, he murmured, the words like a lifeline in a sea of change. His aunt's face lit up with a tender glow. It belonged to your cousin before she got married, she said, her voice threaded with nostalgia. She was about your size. Neeraj took a deep breath, the air filled with the faint scent of jasmine from his aunt's perfume. With her help, he stepped into the leggings, the fabric clinging to his freshly smoothed legs, a sensation both foreign and intimate. The chemise came next, sliding over his head, the weight of the fabric settling around him like a second skin. His aunt worked with deft fingers, adjusting the material, smoothing creases, tucking, and draping until the image in the mirror began to align with the vision in her mind. Then came the dapata, the long scarf associated with modesty and grace in Indian attire. His aunt draped it over his shoulders, teaching him how to wear it in a way that was both traditional and flattering. You see, Neeraj, she said, her voice a soft chime, clothing is not just about covering oneself. It's about expression, about the dance between culture and individuality. Neeraj nodded, his eyes locked on the mirror. The boy named Neeraj was receding, giving way to Ashmita, a name that felt like a whisper from another life. The transformation continued. His aunt applied a bindi on his forehead, right between his brows, a red dot that marked the culmination of his visage. The jewelry was next, the bangles that clinked melodically with each movement, the earrings that dangled with a delicate grace, and the necklace that signified the elegance of Ashmita's newfound form. With each addition, Neeraj felt his identity shift, mold, and expand. He was becoming a bridge between worlds, a testament to the fluidity of self. The makeup was no longer a mask to hide behind but a means to reveal the person emerging from within. The cold darkened his gaze, lending it a depth that seemed to hold stories yet untold. The lipstick no longer felt like a stranger's smear but a rightful claim to the persona he was embracing. His aunt stepped back, her eyes misting with an emotion that was a cocktail of pride, love, and a hint of sorrow for the innocence that was being transformed. Look at you, Ashmita, she said, the name rolling off her tongue as if it had always belonged to him. Neeraj, no, Ashmita, stood there, the light caressing her contours, her heart a mixture of elation and uncertainty. Aunt, I feel different, she admitted, her voice a blend of Neeraj's baritone and Ashmita's emerging melody. That's the power of embracing all parts of yourself her aunt whispered, her words like a mantra for the journey ahead. You are not leaving Neeraj behind. You are allowing him to grow, to include Ashmita in his being. In the reflection, Ashmita saw not just a boy or a girl, but a soul unbound by the rigid lines of gender, dancing freely in the space between. Her aunt, the architect of this transformation, stood beside her, a guardian angel who had unlocked the doors to this vast new expanse of identity. They took photographs, a series of stills that captured the ephemeral beauty of the moment. With each click of the camera, Ashmita felt a piece of herself falling into place, a puzzle that she had never known was incomplete until now. As the sun arched across the sky, marking the passage of time, Ashmita stood at the threshold of a new world, the room around her was the same, but she was altered, not just in appearance, but in spirit. 
the story of Neeraj, the reluctant crossdresser, had taken an unexpected turn. It was now the story of Ashmita, a persona born from the union of curiosity and acceptance, a narrative that would continue to unfold in the light of self-discovery and the love that had made it all possible. As the sun danced its midday waltz, casting light and shadow in equal measure, the apartment that Neeraj and his aunt shared was quiet, save for the soft rustle of fabric and the occasional clink of bangles. In the sanctity of this space, Ashmita stood, a delicate figure poised on the brink of infinite possibilities. The Salwar Kameez enveloped her in a mantle of femininity that was both alien and familiar. The fabric whispered secrets with each movement, tales of the many women who had worn such garments before, each with their own stories, struggles, and triumphs. Ashmita was now part of this timeless narrative, woven into the fabric of a shared sisterhood. Neeraj's aunt watched with a bittersweet pride as Ashmita navigated this new existence. She saw the subtle shift in posture, the softening of gestures, and the careful way Ashmita now moved through the room, a room that had witnessed the transformation of a boy burdened with the weight of societal expectations into a being who dared to transcend them. Aunt, Ashmita's voice trembled like a leaf in a gentle breeze, I never thought clothes could make me feel so... different. I feel beautiful, but also scared. Her aunt's response was a tender smile, a balm to the uncertainty that clouded Ashmita's bright eyes. Beauty often walks hand in hand with bravery, my child. To embrace yourself, in all your forms, is perhaps the bravest thing you can do. They spent the day in a bubble of exploration, with Ashmita learning the subtle art of being a woman in a society that had rigid expectations. Each lesson, from the way she should sit, to the delicate manner in which she must handle the folds of her kameez, was a step further away from Neeraj and deeper into the essence of Ashmita. The afternoon waned, and with it, the initial surge of exhilaration began to ebb, leaving behind a tide of introspection. Ashmita gazed out of the window, watching the world go by, a world that now seemed both distant and demanding. Aunt, she asked, her voice laced with the duality of her identity, what happens tomorrow? When I go back to being Neeraj? Her aunt's eyes met hers in the reflection of the glass, a mirror to her soul. Neeraj, Ashmita, they are both you. You don't have to go back or forward to be one or the other. You can simply be. The words were a compass in a sea of confusion, pointing Ashmita towards a truth she had only just begun to grasp. Identity wasn't a garment to be worn and discarded. It was an ever-evolving landscape, a horizon that stretched in every direction. As the day gave way to the dusky hues of evening, Neeraj's aunt posed a question, her words delicate as the touch of the dipada on Ashmita's shoulders. Would you like to be Ashmita again? Perhaps, sometimes, when you feel the need? Ashmita's response was a nod, subtle but certain. Yes, aunt. But only here, at home. Ashmita at home, and Neeraj to the world, her aunt summarized, a promise forged in the quiet acceptance of their shared secret. The photographs taken that day were more than mere images. They were a testament, a visual chronicle of the journey Ashmita had embarked upon. Each picture was a note in the melody of her life, a life that now played to a rhythm that defied the conventional. The night settled in, a blanket of stars stretched across the sky, and within the four walls of their home, Ashmita felt the embrace of a newfound serenity. She promised herself to honor this aspect of her being, to give Ashmita the space to breathe, to exist, to be. As she prepared for bed, removing the bangles, wiping away the coal, and unpinning the bindi, she felt a connection to each piece, a silent acknowledgement of their role in her revelation. The clothes were folded neatly, the jewelry placed tenderly in the box, and the makeup removed with care, each a sacred ritual of preservation until Ashmita would choose to walk the earth again. In the darkness of her room, Neeraj returned, yet he was not the same. 
He was more complete, more complex, a tapestry of identities that he was only just beginning to understand. As sleep claimed him, he drifted into dreams where labels faded, and only the pure essence of self remained. The story of Neeraj and Ashmita was one of acceptance and promises, a narrative that wove through the fabric of reality and the threads of a deeper understanding. It was a story that had no end, for it was the story of a life being lived in its fullest, most honest form. As the night cloaked the world in its silent shroud, the heartbeat of the city slowed to a peaceful rhythm. Within the walls of the apartment, Neeraj lay in the cradle of sleep, his dreams a kaleidoscope of colors and emotions. The moonlight, filtering through the sheer curtains, played upon his resting form, painting him in shades of silver and shadow. In the liminal space between dreams and waking, Neeraj found himself on a dance floor, the tiles reflecting a thousand hues beneath his feet. He was clothed in the salwar kameez, the fabric flowing around him like a second river of moonlight. Ashmita moved within him, her presence as natural as breathing, her essence a melody that harmonized with the music of his soul. The dream was a tender waltz of identities, where Neeraj led and followed in turn, his movements a testament to the fluidity of his inner nature. Ashmita twirled within, her laughter a chime that echoed through the chambers of his heart. Morning broke with the tender caress of the sun, coaxing the city awake with its gentle warmth. Neeraj's eyes fluttered open, the remnants of the night's dream still clinging to his consciousness like dew upon grass. His aunt, the silent sentinel of his journey, was already up, the sounds of breakfast preparation a symphony that spoke of normalcy and routine. Yet, within Neeraj, the routine was now a canvas stretched upon the frame of his experiences, waiting for the colors of his dual existence to bring it to life. As he dressed in the simple attire of Neeraj, the boy everyone knew, he could not help but feel the soft whispers of Ashmita's garments against his skin, a memory that was both comforting and disconcerting. The duality of his existence had become a dance, one that he was only just learning the steps to. Breakfast was a quiet affair, the clink of spoons against bowls underscoring the silence that hung between them, a silence filled with unspoken understanding and acceptance. His aunt's eyes met his over the rim of her teacup, a smile dancing in their depths. Will you be going out today? She inquired, her voice the brushstroke of normalcy on the canvas of their morning. Neeraj nodded, his thoughts adrift. Just to the library. There's a project I need to work on. The library, with its high ceilings and the scent of old books, was a sanctuary of a different kind. Here, amidst the quietude and the company of a thousand stories, Neeraj found a semblance of peace. The characters within the pages whispered to him of lives lived boldly, of characters who defied convention, of stories where the protagonists embraced their multifaceted natures. The day passed in a blur of words and whispers, of pages turned and knowledge sought. Neeraj felt the weight of his dual identity like a tome carried in his chest, its pages filled with the nascent script of Ashmita's story. As the sun began its descent, painting the sky in strokes of orange and pink, Neeraj made his way home. The walk was a time of reflection, each step a beat in the rhythm of his existence. The city around him buzzed with life, unaware of the transformation that occurred within one of its many children. Upon his return, his aunt greeted him with a quiet nod, a silent acknowledgement of the journey he had been on, even if it had only been to the library. Dinner was a simple affair, yet the flavors seemed enhanced by the secret that seasoned their lives. After the meal, Neeraj retired to his room, the sanctuary where Neeraj and Ashmita could coexist without the need for words. He sat at his desk, the blank pages of his journal open before him, a silent invitation to pour forth the narrative that churned within. The pen touched paper, and words began to flow, each sentence a step in the dance of duality.
He wrote of the transformation, of the fears and the exhilaration, of the acceptance and the promises, of the dance floor in his dreams where he and Ashmita moved as one. The night grew deep, and the city fell silent, but within the quiet confines of his room, Niraj's story poured forth, a river of ink and truth. The journal became a vessel for his dual existence, a testament to the dance of Niraj and Ashmita. As sleep finally claimed him, Niraj knew that the dance was far from over. It was an eternal waltz of self-discovery, of embracing the myriad aspects of his identity. The story of Niraj and Ashmita was one of courage and beauty, a narrative that transcended the pages of his journal to etch itself upon the fabric of his being. The dusk settled over the city like a velvet shawl, draped delicately across the shoulders of the bustling metropolis. Inside the apartment, the transition from day to night was marked by the soft click of a lamp switch, casting a warm glow over the walls, which held the silent echoes of Neeraj's journey. Neeraj sat at the edge of his bed, the journal lying open on his lap, its pages filled with the ink of his heart, a diary of dual identities. The written words were a bridge between his two worlds, a safe passage for Ashmita to exist in the daylight of Neeraj's reality. His aunt, the custodian of his secret, moved through the adjoining room with a grace that seemed to acknowledge the sacredness of the evening's hush. Her voice, when she spoke, was the soft sound of comfort, Neeraj, come and help me choose saris for the puja next week. The invitation was a thread pulling him back into the fabric of family life, weaving him into the patterns of normalcy and tradition. Yet, as he rose to join his aunt, Neeraj could feel the gentle tug of Ashmita, reminding him of the freedom and wonder she represented. Together, they sifted through saris of silk and chiffon, each a cascade of color and tradition. Neeraj's fingers traced the textures, his mind recalling the sensation of such fabrics against his own skin, the memory a whisper of Ashmita's delight. These colors would look beautiful on you, Ashmita, his aunt said softly, a smile in her voice, as if she could see the girl he became, superimposed upon the boy before her. The comment was a caress, a validation of his inner self, and Neeraj allowed a small smile to grace his lips. Maybe one day, aunt, he replied, the words a promise suspended in the twilight. As they folded the saris, his aunt's stories unfolded, tales of her youth, of festivals and family, each narrative a thread in the tapestry of their lineage. Neeraj listened, his mind weaving his own story into the fabric of his family's history, a tapestry rich with the hues of his newfound self. The night deepened, and the stars began their silent vigil overhead. Neeraj returned to his room, the journal beckoning him once more. He wrote of the evening, of the saris and the soft words of acceptance, of the understanding that glimmered in his aunt's eyes. He wrote until the words blurred into sleepiness, and the pen slipped from his fingers. The journal lay beside him, a silent guardian of his story, as sleep enveloped him in its embrace. In his dreams, Neeraj found himself draped in the saris they had folded, the fabric wrapping around him in a swirl of color. He was both Neeraj and Ashmita, dancing at the puja, his movements a blend of strength and grace. The dream was a vivid tapestry where the threads of his male and female selves were woven seamlessly together, a design so intricate and complete that it defied the need for separation. When morning arrived, stealing into the room with the subtlety of a seasoned thief, Neeraj awoke with the remnants of the dream clinging to him like the fragrance of jasmine. The boundary between his two selves was a veil of twilight, translucent and delicate, a membrane through which the light of his soul shone equally in both forms. The day awaited him, a new chapter in the journal of his life, ready to be filled with the experiences of Neeraj and the whispers of Ashmita, the dance of duality continued, a dance that was both his challenge and his blessing, a dance that he now embraced with the entirety of his being. The story of Neeraj and Ashmita, intertwined as closely as the night with the day, moved forward with the certainty of time. 
It was a story without end, a narrative of becoming and being, a tale of one boy's courageous dance with the twilight of identity.